just make sure you do this before you leave the house because people are gonna be like, what's wrong with this person? They definitely didn't learn how to color within the lines in school. Hey loves, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. A few of you have asked, how do you paint your nails legally blind? So today I got time because I'm gonna show you how I do it as well as the tips and tricks I've been doing that are tried, tested, and true that will help you whether you are part of the sight squad or the blind fam, sometimes doing your own manicure can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna share with you how I do it. I've been painting my nails for years. Fun fact, when I was a kid, my mom would never let me. She didn't want me to get caught up in that, so she gave me books instead. But as soon as I got a little bit of coin, actually it was even before I started working. I remember one time I was at my dad's house and one of his girlfriends bought me a nail polish. My mom was not pleased, but that began my obsession. Hi, I'm Alicia, I'm a polishaholic. I've been learning over the last couple of years how to paint my nails as my vision has worsened. So whether you can see or not, these tips, these hacks I have are definitely gonna help you out. So let's start fresh. If you're wearing some old nail polish, some that's chipped, mashed up, take it off. I highly recommend using a gentle but potent nail polish remover. I like Zoya's Remove Plus. This one is so nourishing. It gets off even glitter nail polish, which is super problematic, but it doesn't overly dry out your nails. I don't know about you, but I have some ashy Larry hands, so to use something as stringent as an acetone dries it out even more, we can't have that. Plus, I live in the six, and even though summer's around the corner, we're not there yet, so the air is dry, so I need to make sure I don't do anything that is not moisturizing. Once you've removed your old manicure, you're gonna go in with an oil moisturizer. You can use the one like I've shown in this video. I think it's the Orly one. I don't know, I got it for free years ago. It's an oldie but a goodie. If you don't have that on deck, just grab some olive oil or avocado oil and rub it on your cuticles. You wanna do this to truly nourish and moisturize that area because the next step is gonna be pushing back the cuticle. This is essential if you want your nail polish, your pedicure, your manicure, your any cure to look profesh. Nobody wants that old dead skin up in there. Even if you paint your nails to perfection, it's gonna look like trash. So push back those cuticles the best you can. I can't see my cuticles, so I just push to my heart's content and then I moisturize whatever left oil I have in. You can also use this time to get rid of any hangnails, any free skin that's hanging there that's gross. You've done all of that. Step four is for file. So you're gonna go in and start off by filing the surface of your nail bed. This is crucial if you want your nail polish to lay smooth and flat. If you have ridgy nails or nails that peel a lot like mine, this is essential, especially as your nails grow out. Right now, my nails are a little stubby, can't even lie, but when they get longer, I have to make sure I do this step at least once a week to ensure that things don't peel and get crackly. Once you file down using all three edges, so it goes from coarse to fine and then polish, you can do the free edge. I don't have much of a free edge right now, but the free edge is the part of your nail bed that goes over the finger. You wanna file this on all sides, depending on if you're going for square, almond coffee coffee coffin the super pointy one that looks like you're on demon time or you know my favorite square whatever you decide do it consistently I know sometimes I'd be having one that's more round than the rest but do your best make sure that you get rid of any parts that might snag if you're part of the curly hair community like me you don't want any of these parts to catch up in your hair trust me it's happened before many times and if it's deep enough that's a whole nother problem. Between paper cuts, hang nails, I love that I'm counting on the same finger, <laughs> and those stupid little bits of your nails that catch on things, those are the three worst hand first world problems. Once you filed your nails to your desired smoothness and shape, you're gonna move on to the next step, which of course is your base. This can be either a care base, something that's gonna nourish, condition, strengthen, moisturize, or just a base base if you wanna keep it basic. In this one, I'm using the base that comes in the set, but you can use whatever and mix and match and find what best suits you. Sometimes I switch it out for a strengthener, sometimes I switch it out for something that induces growth, although I've done some reviews in the past. They help a little bit, but Biotin does it the best. So you put your base coat on, do a generous layer. Even if it's like put three layers on, follow the instructions because each base coat might have a different direction. 
but most often than not, one thick, generous base coat is good or a really, really thin one, depending on the consistency. So read those instructions, follow the directions, or figure it out depending on what you feel works best for you. Once you put your base coat on, let that set, make sure it dries fully and less otherwise directed, and then go in with your first layer of nail polish. I tend to go really thin with it. It looks super streaky, super messy, that's okay. We're gonna figure it out, we're gonna fix this mess but you just do that, let it dry. This is sort of like priming the nails in the way since more polish will come. Once that's done, let it dry, add your second coat. I wouldn't recommend if you're legally blind doing a third coat just because when things get too thick, they're more likely to separate or fringe or chip. So try to do max two coats. Sometimes you can find those really good nail polishes that are one coat wonder. I don't really own any of those, but if you can get your hand on those, those are blind chick friendly. Once you've done that, the next step is to go in with your top coat. Now this is essential. This is where you smooth out everything. If you feel like you had a couple bubbles in your nails, if you feel like things weren't just as smooth as you wanted them to be, a good base coat is gonna make things look a lot better than they were before. I'm telling you, this is my trick to everything. Base coat to me is like Facetune to Instagram chicks. Like it's just required. It's a prerequisite in order to get this manicure looking good. So once you've applied your base coat, you're gonna let that dry for at least two hours. Don't wash dishes, don't wash your hair, don't shower for two hours, or even better yet, shower before, and then shower the next day. Cause we're gonna use steam and the shower to fix up the mess we made. So I'm sure you can tell by now from seeing all the cutaways that my hands look like a five-year-old painted my nails. I probably painted them better when I was five years old. I didn't paint my nails when I was five, but for real, for real, they look a hot mess and that's because I can't really see what I'm doing. I can't see my digits. So we're gonna fix this. It's always better that you overpaint rather than underpaint because there's nothing worse than having a little bit here. And this, even though I can't see it, it annoys me. I'll take a picture with my phone and zoom in to make sure everything's smooth. And if I see a little bit there, I'll take off my nail polish and start all over again. Now that you've given your nail polish time to truly set on your nails, Go take your shower two hours or the day after. Just make sure you do this before you leave the house because people are gonna be like, what's wrong with this person? They definitely didn't learn how to color within the lines in school. Once you're in the shower, let the magic of the steam work miracles on your mask. This is where I like to use my loofah and lightly exfoliate the corner of here. You can also use your shower gel, cream, whatever type of product you use around that area just to lightly loosen it. When you come out of the shower, especially if you take hot showers like me, the steam is gonna lift and loosen the lacquer from your fringe. Once you've done that, it's perfection. You can go in again with some hand lotion just to lightly moisturize, because sometimes when you do this, it can get a little dry. That's how I paint my nails legally blind. Oh, okay, okay, before we wrap up, I gotta, I gotta give you some tips on how to paint your nails effectively when you can't see your fingertips. So what you're gonna do is first, you can try using the edge of a table, not like this, cause it's hard. Go like this and go as close as you need to. Having your fingers face up instead of flat on the table gives you more of an angle to work with, trust me. Also do a little bit of reverse engineering or reverse gravity, I don't know, reverse something. Reverse like you're trying to parallel park. You're gonna go in. That's such a weird illusion, but go with me. You're gonna go in, so you wanna get every bit there, and then you pull out. Don't add any jokes there. Unless you're looking for that look where you just have a little bit of a moon showing. I don't like that look. I like the whole nail to be painted. So I always pull in before I go out. Tip for my Legally Blind loves. This is super weird, but it works. You take your hand, especially your non-dominant hand, and when you're painting your dominant hand, you hold it like you would hold a clam, I don't know. And then you're gonna paint like this. This keeps this hand steady, because I find when I try to paint with my left hand, it's all over the place. So I go like this, that way my right doesn't look so messed up. Another tip, instead of holding your hand on any surface, is just to fold it on itself and paint. This is my main way of doing it, especially if I want my nails to look really, really good, almost professional. The closer I go, Although I can't see that well, I can at least see enough to see the outline of my nail and then I can kind of fill it in like paint by number. That's too hard for you like this or like this. You can take the bottle. Don't use a full bottle. I've accidentally made the mistake before of pouring out half the bottle of polish, but take your nail varnish bottle, 
hold it less so, like you're just holding it regularly, and paint while turning the bottle towards you. That's that on that. Those are all the tips I have, all the hacks on how I'm able to paint my nails and make them presentable. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe if you haven't. We're on the road to 20K by May. Thank you as always for making it to the end of this one. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.